Rather than spending loads of money on mining equipment like ASIC miners or GPU mining rigs, not to mention the expensive power bills that come with running that kind of hardware, isn't it better to just take all that money and simply buy the crypto instead? Well, today we're going to be comparing buying versus mining crypto. We're going to crunch our numbers and compare both worst and best case scenarios. So let's get right into it. And to start, we need to make sure we have a clear understanding of these two different approaches that we are comparing today. You know, mining crypto and buying crypto. And I guess the concept of buying crypto is fairly easy to wrap your head around. You exchange a certain amount of your money for a cryptocurrency and the price of that cryptocurrency on the day you bought it is what dictates how much of it you will receive. And then that is the whole end of it basically. For example, if the price of Bitcoin is $50,000 and you spend $5,000, you get 0.1 Bitcoin. That is then all you will ever have forever. The coin price can then either go up and you can sell it at a profit or the coin price can go down and if you sell it then, well, you've made a loss. However, the concept of mining crypto can be slightly more complicated to wrap your head around at first. But the best way I like to describe it is that you are making an initial investment into a piece of mining equipment and that equipment then allows you to turn electricity into cryptocurrency. Of course, you are then also paying for the electricity to run that mining equipment but you should be aiming to make sure that the crypto your equipment mines every day is worth more than the cost of the electricity needed to run it. And that is what we refer to as our mining profitability. And mining profitably basically just means that your power costs are lower than the value of your mined coins on a daily basis. As an example, this KS0 Pro currently mines about 13 Caspa coins per day, which at today's coin price of Caspa is worth around $2.34 and at my electricity price of 13 cents per kilowatt hour, it costs me around 31 cents to run this thing every day. So in other words, this thing is profitable for me, making just over $2 of profit after power every single day right now. And for reference, I believe these cost around $500 to buy at the moment. I'll link it down in the video description for anyone who might be interested. Now, I actually like to visualize this concept of mining in a different way. The way I look at it is that this here is a machine that lets me buy crypto at a massive discount every day. Because looking at it practically, Every day I am paying 31 cents in power to run this and I am receiving $2.34 worth of crypto. In this case, the coin called Caspa. So with mining, we are basically making a bigger initial investment into a piece of hardware and that hardware then allows us to purchase crypto at a discount. So sticking with that example for this Caspa miner, you can either sell that mine crypto every day to cover the cost of your power and realize those $2 worth of daily profit, or you can decide to hold that full $2.34 of crypto you receive every day in the hopes that it might grow significantly in value long term. Now, there is one more thing we need to take into account here too, and that is that the piece of hardware we bought is actually a separate investment in and of itself as well. And for new miners, this might come as a bit of a surprise, but the actual hardware can actually increase in value. So in a best case scenario, you might buy a piece of hardware. That hardware then allows you to buy crypto at a discount every single day. And after a certain amount of time, you might also be able to sell that piece of hardware for double what you bought it for, or maybe even more than that. And that is kind of the optimal scenario in crypto mining and the strategy that a lot of us try to apply in our mining journeys. A good analogy that gets brought up a lot and shout out to Modern Mining here on YouTube. I'll link his channel down in the video description. You should all go subscribe to him. But he spoke more in depth about this in one of his recent videos. But the analogy is basically that crypto mining is very similar in concept to buying a property and renting it out. In that scenario, you make an initial investment by buying a property or in crypto mining, you buy a piece of mining hardware. You then have operating costs like the general upkeep of the house, repairs and all that kind of stuff that you have to pay for, which will be equivalent to the electricity you have to pay for in mining. But then you of course also have an income, which in the rental property scenario is the rent payments from your tenants, which hopefully are bigger than the costs of the upkeep and repairs of the property. Just like in mining where your mined coins hopefully are worth more than the cost of the electricity needed to run the equipment. And then finally, you have the ability to sell the property at a later date, hopefully for more than you bought it for, just like in mining with your hardware. So looking at the pros and cons of buying and mining crypto, 
The pro of buying is obviously that it's simple and easy to do. But the big con is that your investment is just fully tied to the coin price of whatever crypto you bought. If you spend $1000 on some coin and that coin then goes to zero, well, you've lost all your money. But in contrast to that, if you instead spend $1000 on mining equipment to mine that coin, and again, the coin goes down to zero, well, at least you still have $1000 worth of mining equipment, which you can then either sell to recoup your investment, or you can just pivot to mining a different coin with it instead. And also, hopefully you realized a lot earlier that that coin was on its way down to zero, and you swapped to mining a better coin a lot sooner. Now, with mining over buying, there are two main advantages that we have. The first one is the one I've already touched on, which is that the hardware itself is its own separate investment, acting as sort of a hedge or safety net to significantly lower the risk involved when dealing with how volatile the crypto market can be. How safe that investment is, of course, depends on how specialized the hardware you buy is. For example, if you buy an ASIC miner that can only mine one single coin, your hardware isn't going to be worth much if that one coin completely tanks in value. But on the opposite side of that, if you buy something like a GPU mining rig, you can always just take that apart and sell the graphics cards from your rig to people building gaming PCs. So in a situation like that, your investment into mining hardware can be completely separated from the market movements of crypto altogether. The second advantage we have on our side when mining as opposed to buying crypto is time. When buying crypto, you make a purchase at one certain time and you better then just hope that you bought at the right time and that the coin price goes up from that point. But no matter what, however much crypto you received from that one purchase, that's how much you're gonna have now forever. And if you want more, you then need to make another purchase and spend more money. With mining, however, there is no real limit to how much crypto you can accumulate with one piece of hardware. To make that concept easier to visualize, let's say you sell enough of your mined crypto every day to cover the power cost and you save the rest. So all we're focusing on here is the actual daily profit your miner takes home after power. The only limiting factor for how much crypto that single piece of hardware can accumulate then is time. Because in theory, you can just buy a single piece of mining hardware once and it will still be bringing in more crypto every single day, a year later, two years later, five years later, if you're lucky, maybe even 10 years later. The point is that when buying, there's a hard limit for how much crypto a certain amount of money will get you. But with mining, your crypto bag can theoretically keep growing indefinitely. So let's look at some real scenarios for these concepts. Let's say we start out with a budget of $5,000 to invest, and we can either just buy crypto or buy mining equipment with that money. When buying crypto, there are basically two different scenarios that can play out. Either the coin price goes up before you sell and you make a profit, or you sell after the coin price has gone down and you have then made a loss. With mining, however, we have a lot of different possible scenarios, because there are quite a few different things that will affect the outcome. Starting with the first one, which is how the mining profitability will change over time, which then in turn is affected by stuff like your power price, the network hash rate and the coin price. The second thing is what mining strategy we actually are using. Are we selling our mined coins every day to lock in the daily profit, or are we holding all the mined coins and paying for power out of pocket in hope that the coin price will increase? The third one is that if we are holding the coins, then of course the actual coin price going up or down has a massive effect on our outcome. And the fourth one is how the value of our mining equipment changes over time, as we might make a significant profit there as well. And while it might sound like having so many things affect our outcome is a bad thing, it actually isn't, because it basically gives us multiple chances to make a good profit or at the very least, not lose all of our investment. Think of it this way, for it to get so bad that we lose our whole investment, all those things I just listed will all have to go to the worst case scenario all at the same time, basically. For you to lose that whole $5,000 investment you made into mining, well, first of all, mining profitability would have to completely tank, making your equipment completely unprofitable. And you would also have had to held all the coins you mined and never sold any of it. And at the same time as that, the coin price also would have to go all the way down in the dumps to make all that mined coins you held worthless. 
Plus, on top of all of that, all of the hardware you bought for mining must also have to have lost 100% of its value too. So you'd basically need a perfect storm of four different things, all going in the worst way possible at the same time to lose your whole initial investment in mining. But you know, maybe mining profitability does tank, and you held all of your mined coins and they are all now worthless because the price went to zero, but at least you might be able to sell your mining hardware for at least half of what you bought it for, then that's at least better than if you had just bought the coins, in which case you would have lost it all. So there you can see that when it comes to worst case scenarios, in mining you kind of have a few extra layers of safety. Your hardware is a separate investment, you can adjust your mining strategy, you can potentially mine different coins if one tanks, mining profitability changes over time, and so on. Whereas in buying crypto, your investment is completely tied to the price movement of that coin you bought. But now that we've looked at worst case scenarios, let's hop on over on the computer and crunch some numbers for best case scenarios after a quick word from our sponsor. Coin Mining Central is an online store for ASIC miners and there's no doubt that right now ASIC mining is by far looking like the most profitable type of mining and the miners that I'm personally most interested in right now would probably be the Bitmain L7 and E9 Pro as well as the Jazzminer X16Q. And what's cool about Coin Mining Central is that they always offer free worldwide express shipping and I've always felt fully comfortable recommending them to you guys and here's why. As opposed to most other ASIC vendors that are based overseas, Coin Mining Central is based and run out of England Europe where they have to adhere to the very strict regulations for customer support and personal detail protection that we have over here. And of course, all brand new miners come with a full manufacturer warranty as well. And because of this, Coin Mining Central has been a highly trusted ASIC miner store for miners like you and me for over five years at this point. They also care about this community being very active and reachable on social media. And they've also provided loads of exclusive discount codes for you guys that you can use together with the link in the video description to save big on any miner that you wanna get. And speaking of prices, I don't know if you've noticed, but ASIC prices have been dropping dramatically these past few months. So right now could be a very good time to stock up on some cheap hardware before the crypto market recovers. Especially considering you get the already competitive pricing that Coin Mining Central has, plus the free worldwide shipping, plus the exclusive discount codes that I mentioned. So go check that out today. I'll have all of those discount codes and the exclusive link for you down in the video description. All right, so I have a quick little spreadsheet that I threw together here just to compare the kind of best case scenarios for mining versus buying crypto. And to start off, let's just go through all of the different aspects that can affect our outcome here, starting with what our initial investment will be. And for this example, I've put $5,000, so that would be $5,000 either uh, used to purchase crypto directly or $5,000 used to purchase mining equipment. Next up, we have what our initial coin price will be. Now, this is just a sort of um, example scenario. So, you know, more used to prove kind of the underlying concepts that's going on here. So let's, for the sake of an example, uh, say that a coin that we're either purchasing or mining is worth $1. And then we have the final coin price, which is after, you know, all is done here. How much has that coin increased in value? Because we're talking about best case scenarios here. We're obviously going to focus on the coin price going up. We already spoke about what happens when the coin price goes down previously in the video. Right. So for this example, let's say the coin price 10 X right? It goes up 10 times in value from $1 per coin to $10 per coin. We can adjust that a little bit later to see kind of different scenarios too. And then we also have the amount of days. So in the terms of mining, how many days will we be, will we be mining for? I've put uh, 730 days here, uh, which is, you know, exactly two years. Or in terms of buying, it's just how long are we holding it before we're able to sell it for, you know, the 10 times more. In terms of the math, Behind all of this, the amount of days doesn't really matter for the buying, but it does for the mining. So then we also have the mining revenue, power cost and hardware appreciation for the mining equipment. And I would say that if we're spending $5,000 on mining equipment, it is kind of a realistic scenario that right now we would be mining at least $10 a day in terms of mining revenue, the total amount uh, value for the crypto that we're mining every day and that the power cost would be something like $5. So basically we're mining $10, power cost $5, we're left with a $5 profit every day. And as for hardware appreciation, we can play around with this, but basically it means how much more is the mining hardware 
worth at the end of this whole journey as compared to what it is now then you know when we're buying it we'll, we'll play around with that a little bit more towards the end too but let's start by just looking at buying crypto here so we got our little buying section here we have our first day and our final day first off the money spent is five thousand dollars because we purchased crypto for five thousand dollars there are no other costs involved because all we did was just buy five thousand dollars worth of crypto and the amount of coins we're holding both on the first day and the final day is five thousand because we said this hypothetical coin uh, cost one dollar per coin when we first bought it here so on day one five thousand coins final day five thousand coins as well on the first day the coins, the total value of all the coins is $5,000. And on the final day, it's worth $50,000 because coin price went from $1 to $10. Pretty easy math there. We have no other assets and our final profit on day one would be, you know, $0 because we spent $5,000 and we have $5,000 worth of crypto. And on the final day, our final profit is $45,000 because we have $50,000 worth of crypto, but we did spend $5,000. So our final profit is $45,000. Pretty easy, pretty simple to wrap your head around. Now let's compare that to mining, which is our second little field here, right? So same thing, uh, money spent first day is 5,000 and final day 5,000. We do however have other costs, namely the power costs to run our mining equipment. So on the very first day that is of course zero dollars, but on the final day that is of course um, our mining power cost which we set to five dollars per day times 730 days. So that kind of comes out to uh, $3,650 uh, total in our power cost. The amount of coins held on the very first day is zero, but on the final day here, taking the mining revenue of $10, times that with the coin, uh, we're getting 7,300 coins on the final day. So after 730 days, we have 7,300 coins. So already we have more coins than we do from buying after two years, uh, but we of course also have higher costs because we're also paying for crypto so let's see how that shakes out right the coins we have um, on the final day are worth seventy three thousand dollars as opposed to fifty thousand dollars and here's another thing though we also have other assets because our mining equipment is worth money and on the first day we you know we bought it for five thousand dollars it is worth five thousand dollars so if we were to sell it again again final profit on the first day just like when buying crypto we can sell the crypto for what we bought it for on the first day. We can sell the mining equipment what we bought it for on the first day. So zero dollars in profit on the first day. However, the final day, we are looking at hardware that will double in value. So our other assets have also doubled in value. So not only has the crypto that we've mined grown by, you know, 10x because of the coin price going up, but also the hardware has doubled in value. So in the end here, we have $73,000 worth of crypto and we have $10,000 worth of mining equipment to sell. And subtract the $5,000 we spent buying the equipment as well as subtract the $3,650 we spent on power, we are still making it out with $74,350 in total profit after all is said and done. Now that is from mining for 730 days. So I want to show you some other examples here because only two years of mining, if you get some good mining equipment, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to mine for longer than just two years for that. Like let's say five years, right? So that would instead be three, 365 times five. And you can see buying time doesn't really make a difference in terms of how much coin you get, but with mining, it does. We still have 5,000 coins when buying, but with mining, we're now up to 18,000, over 18,000 coins. Of course, we're spending more on power. The longer it goes, the more power we use to keep mining. But as you can see, as long as we're mining profitably, we are ending up with so much more coins in the end and so much more profit in the end. You know, mining, we're now over uh, $170,000 in terms of profit. So, you know, even then, if let's say we can't sell our mining equipment anymore, you know, that's still only $10,000 less. So let's uh, let's go back to our two year hypothetical here. You can see even then, 
I even if we're not able to sell our mining hardware at the end, we're still making it out ahead. So as you'll kind of see, with mining, it's it's just kind of this longer game, right? That you, you just gotta be patient. Yeah, if you're if you're only planning on mining for a hundred days, <laughs> you're gonna end up better off from uh, from buying crypto instead of mining. But that is only now also if we're you know not taking uh, hardware appreciation into account. Let's say one x at least. Um, but yeah, of course buying ends up better there because you only have a hundred days of mining. But as long as you start getting up there, you know, 500 days or so, yeah, there we go. Now we're ahead again. And another scenario I want to show you guys before we wrap up here is what if the coin price does not increase at all? So what if it stays at $1? Well, with buying, then you're just making no profit. You're ending up with the same amount that you started with, basically. But in mining, you are still making it out ahead then because you keep accumulating more and more coin every day. And you also have your hardware sort of as a secondary investment and as you can see here even with no coin price um, in increase right if we if we go for a good thousand days let's say which is just under three years right yeah still a five thousand dollar profit at no coin price growth growth at all and even if you know the coin let's say loses in value it loses 25 percent of its value you know then if we're buying crypto we're losing money but with mining we're still ending up ahead and that's not just from being able to sell our hardware for the same amount we bought it for because then we would just end up with zero here if that was all that matters but rather we're selling the hardware for what we bought it for and then we're ending up with two thousand five hundred dollars more on top of that now what i'll do is i'll leave a link to this spreadsheet down in the video description and if you just hit file make a copy you can kind of have a play around with it yourself to kind of see how different scenarios affect the different outcomes differently if you want to learn more about how mining profitability actually works i'll put a video about that on the screen here and below that i'll put my video comparing the pros and cons of different types of mining hardware so i'll see you there thanks for watching